Welcome back to Recharge. Dr. Gene Chirac right here with Dr. Corey Howe. We are going to talk some more golf with you guys and gals today. When we're looking at golf performance, we want to answer the question or ask the question and answer it. What can we do to have you play golf as long as possible? And when we get into that question, that, that's performance to us. Yes, can you play better? Can you hit it further? Can you do all those things? Those are important, but can we keep you playing longer? And for that to happen, can we put your body and build up your body to a point that it allows it to play 18, 36, and beyond multiple times a week or every day if you're living your best life. So what we're gonna talk about today is some of that. What can we do to optimize and, and build up parts of the swing to allow your tissues to perform a little bit better? Now, we always talk about the golf swing, but we, it's important for us to reiterate and continue to reiterate. If you want to get better at golf, play more golf. And more importantly, talk to a golf professional, somebody that works with the golf swing, somebody that lives and breathes in the golf swing like we live and breathe with the body and tissues, anatomy, and all that fun stuff as physical therapists. So please, if you wanna shave strokes off, talk to a golf pro. If you want to get your body in a better position, then you're in the right place. So let's talk about a few aspects of the golf swing we want you to learn today. <laughs> if I hold Corey's shoulders here, can he go into full Shakira mode and shake his hips? And vice versa. If I hold his pelvis, can he move his trunk above? And that's the dissociation portion, right? Moving one while the other one is not moving. And that's kind of important in the golf swing. When you're doing a golf swing, in the back swing, your pelvis is kind of stationary and your trunk loads up and then your pelvis follows suit and vice versa on the downswing where you lead and then there's that separation. And that, that creates a lot of power, that there's a coil effect in that. So we're gonna show you today is a couple exercises to load and get better in that level of pelvic dissociation, which also helps with force dispersion and gives you more efficiency and effectiveness at contact when you hit the ball. So let's get into a couple exercises. Exercise one. So first exercise, here's what we're gonna do. Grab a weight, it can be a kettlebell. Kettlebells are great because it's a good way to grip it. Um, dumbbells are fine too. If you wanna get super complicated, grab a barbell, but I would start with kettlebell or dumbbell because those are also readily available. So Corey has a 3,000 pound kettlebell right now. He's flexing a little bit. No, it's about 35 pounds. Um, you need something heavy enough that it does present a challenge, that it's not super light. Grab the kettlebell, and then you're gonna hinge down, ideally as close to your, let's say, six, seven iron stance as possible, something along those lines. In that position, everything is locked down now. His arms, his trunk is locked down, so it shouldn't move, and that kettlebell, that weight is going to help with that. If you want a little bit extra tension, you can pull your shoulders back a little bit, and that will further lock down that spine, your shoulder blades, and your upper back. In this position now, you're gonna to start to move your pelvis and your hips back and forth. So you're creating a rotating motion, just a bit of rotation. And the idea here is to change the hinge point to about the mid to low upper back. As this pelvis moves, this creates that initial dissociation. Upper body is quiet, lower body is moving. This involves the low back and the pelvis. What's really cool here is process what you're feeling too. See what your low back and your pelvis is telling you. Do you feel a little stiff and achy? Do you feel a little sore? Do you feel pain even in, in, the, in these instances? Because if you're feeling something right now, it's gonna get exponentially more intense when you're playing 1836 and so forth in terms of holes. So it's a great, not just, a buildup, but it's a great way to scan and analyze what's going on with your body. Try that out, see how it goes. Leave us a comment below to see if it loosens up your hips at all 
um, and really what it's telling how that information is being processed for you. Let's get into exercise two, where we keep the lower body quiet and move that upper body a little bit. So now we're gonna look at a way to keep the lower body quiet while we try to dissociate the uh, upper body from the lower body. Again, that lumbo-pelvic dissociation. Um, the last exercise we showed you, we, we demonstrated a way to kind of lock down the upper body to give us a, um, an easier way to feel us rotating our pelvis while keeping our, our trunk stationary. We're doing the opposite now. So a good way to do that, um, it's hard to lock down the hips. Uh, oof, I'm saying a good way to do that too many times. But um, how we're gonna do that today is down into a kneeling position. So I have Jean down here. Um, by, by staying and kneeling and bringing his hips down to his heels, um, biomechanically, it kind of, in a sense, locks down his, his hips a little bit. Even his lumbar spine has a lot more difficulty moving. Okay, so now we're adding um, a way to keep those hips and his lumbar spine a little more stationary while we try to rotate his upper body. So I'm gonna go ahead and have him cross his arms and lean forward a little bit, kind of in that hip hinge position like we were doing when we were standing. And now from here, all Gene is gonna do is try to rotate his shoulders or his upper body, his trunk, while keeping his hips stationary like that. And he can go side to side, back and forth. Good. When you're doing this at home, what you may feel is a discrepancy from one side to another. Um, a lot of us uh, have those discrepancies and it's fine, but what we need to figure out is how that may impact your golf swing and your golf performance. Um, so if you have stiffness or tightness or even cramping from one side to another, um, that's where we can give you some ideas on how to improve that sensation, improve your strength, improve your mobility in that position and translate into a better golf swing. So I hope you learned a new word today, lumbo-pelvic dissociation. Um, give that a try. Stand there. See if you can move your hips without moving your upper body and vice versa. If you can't, try those uh, exercises that we gave you. Lock down the upper body. See if you can move the hips and vice versa. Lock down your lower body. See if you can move your upper body. See where that issue is. And if you want help in your golf swing or for golf performance, stuff like this, fitness-related golf performance, um, come check us out at Recharge. Uh, hit us up on our web website, rechargexfit.com. You can find us on YouTube as well. And if you want to keep playing longer, um, have control of your body, and again, not be limited on the golf course because your body is sore or you just can't maintain 1836 and plus holes, head over to rechargexfit.com on our website under the golf performance section. We're going to have a ton of programs and workouts that you can buy to further your body capacity and improve your golf performance. So head over to Recharge X Fit. And if you're liking these videos, go ahead and subscribe to our channel to make sure you catch all our latest golf performance videos. And there's gonna be a ton of them. So let's get your game, those strokes down and your golf performance up. Catch you again on the next episode or next video from Recharge.